Hello, this is Nancy Heinz Glazer with a fabulous Meet the Artist program this evening here in Soma TV. And I am joined by two famous people. I will say famous, is that all right with you? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes. Sa <laughs> Sashi Parker and Fred Stoffel, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you're here because you're doing something very cool at the Bergdorf Center coming up uh, um, this weekend. And it's a staged reading of an original play that you co wrote. Correct? Mm hmm. And uh, tell me the name. Whichever one of you want to tell Lucky you. me. Lucky. Okay. Mm -hmm. and that's you, and yeah. that is really, it's autobiographical about you. Right? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Sashi, I think it's important for people in the audience to know who you are, but I've had a chance to watch you in action, so you're much more than your mom. But just tell everybody why you consider yourself lucky in, in what you've written. Who's oh. your mom? Uh, Shirley MacLaine. Okay. <laughs> and she always has been. Always has. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Very bigger than life mm -hmm. and a wonderful lady. Wonderful. Um, I, um, I, I, you know, it's okay because I really didn't want to spend too much time on your mom, but it has to figure into who you are and why you wrote this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. is, it, is it part of why you wrote it? Definitely. It's a big part. Um, Definitely. Uh, I think all of our moms, you know, play a huge part in all of us. Um, and I think her being famous um, maybe adds a little um, more complication to the whole mother-daughter um, relationship that we probably all share. Um, Except maybe for you don't share the mother-daughter thing? No. Okay. No, at least oh, I don't want to go into sorry. it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Well, we all have our own stories, you know, and this is just mine. And we all have um, a different way of looking at um, how we love. And um, I come from a Japanese culture, which is, again, another sort of added beauty and complication and um, language, way of thinking, another perspective, everything to the relationship between my mom and I. And I think that um, that's a very much a part of the script as well. Um, it's a journey, you know, and um, I think it was important for me to write it. Um, to, it's, I think, a love story so for you, my mother and I. I do. You grew up in Japan then as well, or where did you spend a lot I of I actually life? went there when I was two, and I grew up there uh, my whole life. I went to boarding school, actually, in England and Switzerland when I was uh, 12. Um, but I always went back to Japan for vacations, and it was always home. So I, I, it's still home in a lot of ways. I miss it very much. I think this, this what's happening right now is it, 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 it hurts me very deeply. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure it must. I look Irish. Map of <laughs> Ireland on my face, but I'm <laughs> quite <laughs> Japanese. Um, I'm getting more American, though. <laughs> it's taken a long time. <laughs> Fred's helping me with that, with the humor, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah. Now you guys met. Through, uh, in Connecticut? In or? Connecticut, in, the, okay. in the, the workshop up there, the Theater Artist Workshop of West, Westport, but it's, ac it's actually in South Norwalk, Connecticut. And Sachi, uh, I don't know when you joined the, I don't know if you would join when I saw you or if you've already been there before. I don't remember. But I remember you doing a scene from uh, the movie Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Oh, is it's that the first time I'd ever seen you, yes. Isn't that a great one? And it was the first scene on the train. Yeah. Uh, but Sachi did it with a totally different take from the actual movie. So it was, it was a totally fresh scene. And I didn't know who she was. I thought she was a terrific actress. And it took me about a year before I found out that who her, her mom was. So I said, oh, OK. <laughs> that explains it. Yeah. Um, and then we, uh, we, we worked on a lot of things together. We did some plays. We did a play, an evening of plays in the city at the New York and Poets Cafe uh, about five or six years ago, I guess. Yeah. And uh, we've always talked about working on something big, and you know, and and the fact that a lot of people had always mentioned that she should write about her, her relationship with her mom because it was just, you know just interesting. But 
I, she also, many of the things she told me, I realized that her whole story was fascinating because she had lived, you know, not only in, in Japan, England, Switzerland, but also Australia. And uh, you were in France for a while, mm -hmm. right? So she's been all over the place. She's left her mark. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I think really you've probably assimilated every single one of the cultures. I think I have, actually. Yeah, when I, when I lived in England, I spoke with a British accent as well, and then I went to live in Paris, and somehow English had a little bit of a French thing going on. We lived in Australia, it was a definite Sheila. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a bit of a chameleon, I suppose. Yeah. But, and which makes for a good actor. I think so. Well. You yeah. would know that, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, not necessarily. I understand that may be the situation. <laughs> you know, and it's I true. lived one place growing up, so mm -hmm. I didn't really have, I moved around when I got older, but mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm enamored with the idea of being able to grow up in many different places and experience it differently every time, but still being you, you know. Yes, I'm still finding me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fun. It's, um, I, I've been so blessed living in different countries and speaking different languages and seeing the world from all these different perspectives, you know, and learning history, for instance, from Japan's perspective. It's completely different than learning what happened in World War II if you grew up in America, you know. It's really fascinating. And that's true um, because I think as you're moving around, you have to. You, you soak it up, certainly, the culture, but as you begin to meet different people, you must read. I'm sure you must get in, entranced with the idea of what's behind that. You know, yeah, exactly. absolutely. Absolutely. It's not just learning a language. It's um, becoming that culture and mentality. and um, It all goes together. It's not just the language, you know? And so when you so, guys joined forces, did you co-write the, the script for the stage reading we're going to have a chance to see in here? Or did you co-write it? Or is it all based on uh, you? Actually, Fred and I, um, he's, he wrote it. Okay. Fred mm -hmm. and I worked a long time. Um, there were areas where we reworked it, but um, it's... He's done an amazing job taking what I told him in verbal story form and then just adding Fred's genius to what I told him in this, in this, in his writing. He's just a, it, it, well. Well, she has, I mean, she has great stories. The uh, material is like, uh, you can't go wrong with no it. No brainer. And, and yeah. we would have, we would talk over the phone. We would have some lunches. She would have some wine. <laughs> the would come out. I said, really? And then, and so we would start to, and, and, and you know, sometimes uh, she would tell me something, and then I would say, well, what a, did any of this ever happen? And then she, oh, as a matter of fact, that did happen. And then I said, wow, well, that's, that's great. We can use that, too. You know, and, and it was a matter of, after a while, just sort of shaping the material. And there were, a lot of, there were a lot of stories that she had we didn't use because even though they were really interesting and fun, they sort of went off the story or whatever. So, uh, so there's plenty of material for the next show. Exactly. Yes. That's right. Save That's right. Later. <laughs> yes. We yes. had to cut so much. Yeah. yeah. Well, really how did, did you do that? Were you both involved in the process oh, of absolutely. the editing out? And mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, sure. Was that hard for you since it was no, your I, life? I, no, not really. I mean, sometimes, but not really. I, I, uh, I love Fred's third eye, you know, and... Um, him as an artist, and I respect it, and I trust it completely. And um, not only as a as a writer, but he's directing this. And so, um, you know, when you direct a piece, you begin to realize what works in the writing and what doesn't. Also, so I have to put my trust completely in him, being the director. Um, of course, as the writer too, but he's directing his writing, and it's. Um, I have to listen, well, I think even it, though yeah. sometimes I... But I think the process was, was accelerated because I was directing and writing it because mm -hmm. and originally we had other directors involved and it became sort of like somebody in between us mm -hmm. and yeah. if there were things that bothered Sachi, she couldn't tell me. She had to tell the director mm -hmm. and maybe the director would tell me or maybe he wouldn't. And, uh, and as, the, as the show progressed, the directors took off. They left for different reasons. 
And then we wound up just working on ourselves. And as soon as we did, the thing took off because we could just talk to each other and say, this works, that doesn't work. I don't like this line. I'll cut that line. And it was very, it, once we got working together, it actually, it was so much easier. Really. And so much fun. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of it too. You know, we, we really connect um, in a big way. Mm -hmm. I, uh, chemistry and um, uh, just artistically, we speak the same language. You know, we a lot of shortcutting, I think, mm -hmm. and we really respect each other so much that, uh, and we laugh mm -hmm. yeah, we have constantly. A good time. <laughs> We're always like mm -hmm. there are times when we've had. I mean, the rehearsals are cut. By it's just half stop. because <laughs> we can't stop laughing. <laughs> that's how much fun we're having. Mm -hmm. It's just the two of us in a room, you know. And, we just and that's a really good oh, thing, Honest, wow. because yeah. I mm -hmm. think yeah. that could also create some challenges. I've heard, mm -hmm. you know, if you're very close to who you're working with, you have with. to yeah. get along mm -hmm. really yes. well. Mm -hmm. We really get along well, yeah. and um, I, I I appreciate that so much. It's it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, it's not every day that you, you yeah, if you have fun while you're working, yeah. it's so much easier because some there are some times you work and it's a very uh, you know it's a very tough set you know and that's the way the people want to run it. They want everybody to be on edge or something, but I think that stops a lot of creativity that way. Mm. So to me, it's like it's it's much better if everyone's having a great time because then you never know what's going to pop up you yeah. know because they're we're relaxed. You know? That's right. And you just sort of hang that's out right. and. And Have see, fun. that's thought that's of really like an act. That's thought of like a writer, because you mm -hmm. know happy accidents when you're writing. Yeah. I know mm -hmm. you do. And you know we're going to go away for a short break and oh. come back in just a minute. There's so much to say, though. I'm getting all excited. <laughs> Want to talk a little bit about the process of workshopping mm -hmm. a new play as well. And that's what we're lucky enough to have you here doing. So when we come back from the break, is that okay? We'll pick it up with you. Okay. I'm so delighted that you're here. I'm very excited. Okay, don't turn that dial. Come on back and hear from the wonderful playwright and storyteller, <laughs> Sashi Parker and Fred Strummel, presenting Lucky Me at the Berkeley Cultural Center. See you in a minute. After 17 years working as a mason, Mike was laid off. I met him when he came into the library looking for help. He found a job opening, but the application was only online. Mike said he'd spent his entire life around tools, but had never used a computer. I showed him how, and he ended up applying for numerous jobs online. I saw Mike the other day. His new computer skills paid off. He's working again. New Jersey libraries are transforming lives. Tell us your story. And welcome back. This is Nancy Heinz Glazer with Meet the Artist on Soma TV, Sashi Parker and Fred Stroppel, our special guests today. And when we went for the break, we were going to start talking about how you workshop a play, since the play is an original and you're developing to some extent as it goes. You add a mm -hmm. little, pull Absolutely. things out, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, how is that process? How do you decide where you're going to go first? When you well, decide to do it, we uh, when the when we first wrote the play, it was about seventy pages long, and somebody looked at it and said, "Well, this is going to run about three hours or something." I said, "Well, <laughs> I don't think it's going to run that long, but it, it's going to it is too long." We just had to figure out what has to be cut out, and and uh, so we we started working on it together, and running through it, and said, "I don't know if that's it seems like that scene is too long, or that scene is too long," but you really can't tell until you get in front of an audience, and we did a, a reading of it uh, two weeks ago for the first time, and. It went really well. It was terrifically, you know, and, and Sachi was spectacular in it. But I could tell that some, there were moments where it just went like this, it went like that, they were up, and then it's like, oh, if we could just cut from here to there and get rid of that. And so we, we changed, we cut some stuff out of it, and I think uh, it should move even better this time. Um, but we're, you always have to listen to the audience and see what's happening. You, and you learn mostly from watching the audience during the show, because you can see when they get restless, you can see when they're sort of, or when they start coughing or coughing. something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Coughing. Coughing's a giveaway, isn't something. it? Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, definitely. <laughs> Even if it's cold season, yeah, you can yeah. tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so we're, we're, and we're still going to keep developing as we go along and, and find out what, what needs to be changed. And uh, um, so I think, it's, I think it's in pretty good shape right now. I, have to say. I think so, too. Yeah. I think so. And I can really feel um, the feedback that I would give Fred Mm -hmm. would always coincide with the audience reaction as well. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's all one. 
isn't it? You know, the, yeah, absolutely. The, mm -hmm. You can feel it. It's uh, definitely. And as we go along, we'll mm -hmm. we'll learn more. Um, but we have to start small and work. You know, that's it's very important. To, but you do need an audience. Mm -hmm. You can't just stay in rehearsal. You know, you really do yeah. need the mm -hmm. audience. It's a, it's the third piece. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. it's even like too, there were too many jokes sometimes where it's like these... Uh, too funny? Too funny? Well, too much sometimes laughing. people laugh too much. Aww. It's like, you know what? They laugh so much now they're too tired. We now they're too tired. We've got to cut some of these laughs out. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's so it's there's weird, that too. It's a weird yeah. science. Mm -hmm. It really is. Mm -hmm. It's a definite science. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. So you both sit backstage and listen and once in a while peek out from the curtain. She's on stage. She has no choice. That's right. You're the star. <laughs> I'm, I'm on. No chance yeah. at all. The whole time. Yeah. So how, do you, how are you giving yourself feedback then? Just by the audience? Oh, absolutely. I have a very healthy third eye. I really know. You know, every second. I'm, um, every second. I feel it. Uh, the audience, the... I feel like a Stradivarius violin. Isn't that weird? Yeah. That's how I wow. feel mm -hmm. on That's the stage. I always have felt that. That's in this particular show too, because yes. she talks a lot to the audience. So mm -hmm. it's like you're looking right at the audience. Yeah. You can sort of see if they're if they're if they're enjoying themselves or not. You yeah. Know? And you switch gears midstream, and you know mm -hmm. you, you you know you do what you have to do to. Mm. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah. what's great about so. it is that she she'll do a lot of monologue scenes, and then she'll go into an actual scene of dialogue between herself and her mother or herself and other characters where she plays both parts at the same time and then you switch back into ah. monologue so it's it's a real it's a tightrope back going from one thing to the other and I think it's it's fun for you I so think so much but, fun uh, I love <laughs> but it it's not easy yeah, a lot of turning on the dime stuff right? yeah mm -hmm. I love that and so you grew up around it did that have anything to do with why you went into acting to start with um probably um, I'm, I'm very grateful that I grew up in Japan where I wasn't around it all the time. You know, I just was around it on the set with my mother on summer vacations, you know, and um, never theater, always movie sets, you know, the cocoon feeling of the warm lights and the everybody watching you, the gaffers and the lighting guys and the, everybody, you know, just all eyes are on my mother but also me um, and it's so warm from the lights and all oh, hush hush rolling you know cameras roll you know and they would do the click oh, yes. I have all those sensory wow. memories of the click you know of the and um, real happy I, I somehow uh, felt so safe in that atmosphere you know and um, when you're on a set and she's the star and I had such great full attention and you know I was just taken care of so well I think there was that too and I'm looking at my mom who looks so pretty and you know <laughs> she she just was this bigger than life this star you know she's my mommy and you know <laughs> just um, very loving and I think I have really happy memories of the set and I love working on a set for that reason. Even, and I know a lot of people complain about the hurry up and wait aspect of shooting a movie. Of the, okay, well, I've got to wait till they set up for the next shot, you know, mm -hmm. and it takes an hour to set it up and mm -hmm. get the lighting just right and isn't that the angle. I love it. I love it. I just, just be there, just sit there. And, and soak it in. But I so, bet that's yeah. also why you can turn on a dime. Because you're so used to hurrying up and wait, but you always have to be listening for mm -hmm. when they say shh. So that's probably oh, yeah. also, yeah. Uh, it, that sort of doesn't come easily for people. And, and probably. Yeah. yeah. So I'm so excited to watch you now. I must go, and I know everybody, you know, we. Mm -hmm. this won't be out in time for us to help your... Um, people in the audience, but it will later and it'll get legs and mm -hmm. people will start buzzing and how are we going to find out about this? Where do we go to look about the continuing production of Lucky Me? Oh, I don't know, because we don't have a website of it yeah. yet. We, have, we just set, set something up for that, you know, but, uh, yeah. but um, I mean, I'm sure 
<coughs> we'll be we'll be starting. Is it, we're hoping Soon. to get a production in in the fall, perhaps in the city. I mean, that's sort of like the goal. So. Um, I, I imagine you'll be hearing about it pretty soon if that happens, okay. you know. Mm -hmm. but we have, and uh, they could also they could also write the station, and I'll be bothering yeah, you yeah. for sure. Well, you know, well, well we have your email now, me. so you'll be That's getting all true. kinds of stuff from us. Yeah. And cell phones, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, you know, and I don't know why, but I'm excited on the personal level because I've been reading your name for years. Your mom is just one of my favorites, really, mm -hmm. yeah. because she's just her. There's not Absolutely. a whole lot of Mm -hmm. And I always admired that uh, quality in her. And um, I'm excited to see that brought to life in your stories about her. Because mm -hmm. there's no question about it, you know. She's just who she is, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's very refreshing. Yeah. Very. And yes. Especially growing up in Japan where um, a lot of tradition and a lot of you have to act this way even when you're feeling that way. And, um, than to have a mother who is so, uh, <laughs> what's the word? Uh, free. She's pretty free. Yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. What she thinks, no censor. It's wonderful, really. I mean, and I, but I've watched her in interviews. She has a nice control over her. She knows just kind of where she can't go with certain things, mm -hmm. really. Oh, yes, you know. of, course, of course. But, you know, you do have her eyes. And I'm sorry to tell you, I'm looking, I'm going, those are the eyes. <laughs> and it's the eyes are the window of the soul, but that's a very important element of an actor quality to reach the audience. And if you can see them and you're breaking that wall, a lot of people can't do that very well. That's also a skill. How did you arrive at that skill. So, I mean, that's hard. Just being able to look um, at the audience instead yeah. of just worried about what you're saying. I've never been worried about what I'm saying. It's always been, um, I, it, it's probably a natural thing. I've been told that. I think it comes from my mother. It's in my blood. Uh, I do believe that. I, I sound like her. I say things the way she says them, expressions on my face, I've been told all, constantly, and I, I didn't grow up with her. It's really, I mean, I spent a, you know, a good, goodly enough amount of time, but not every day, not day in and day out, and I think that it's just in the genes, you know? I really believe it, it's got to be. <laughs> because when I first started, I got it. It was just, um, a knowing um, instinct. Uh huh. Yeah. Very instinctive. Yeah. And Fred, would you say the same about your writing? Has that been an instinctive process? Do you have it in your family? Uh, no. <laughs> Okay. I, say, I have my father's eyes, but he's a bartender. So. All right. And there you go. <laughs> Makes a good vodka yeah. press, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> who knows what that is? I don't know, <laughs> I don't know but let's go try one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I just uh, started writing when I was in high school, for, and I don't know where it came from. I just started, uh, I found it, I had the facility for it, and then I moved into playwriting because I found that was much easier than writing novels. And I can't really figure out why I developed this. I happen to have that particular talent, but I think uh, once I realized I could do it, I just, I'm going to stick with it. And uh, I've written a lot of stuff. Um, I have a play off Broadway and, you know, done some other, you know. You've written a lot. I mean, how many mm -hmm. did you tell me you wrote? Oh, um, I, mean, it, it, I, I don't know how many of full ends. Like over a dozen full ends and about 71 act plays, I think. And uh, about 30 of them have been published, and they get done around the country. And, and it's 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 fun. To, most of them are comedies, and it's just fun to watch people laugh. <laughs> you know, and it's something about it. You know? it. It's interesting about your writing, though. Fred has this wonderful. Um, you take a lot of serious um, subject matters, and and what he he does is bring so much humor to it that it makes it even. Sadder in kind of a funny more way, poignant. Mm -hmm. more yeah. poignant, yeah. and yet you're laughing your head off. Mm -hmm. But it's so the two are going on at once. The it's best kind genius. of theater, isn't I mean, it? Yeah, that yeah. is true. Yeah. You know, we're almost done, and I can't stand no. it. I'm really upset. Okay. I might have to come, have you come back <laughs> when you're in New York and you decide to come visit us uh -huh. and go to the pub again. Uh -huh. Maybe you'll stop <laughs> on by and let us know how it's going. Mm -hmm. I'll be in touch by email and phone and I am so happy, so delighted. This is a real treat. I know everybody's just going to flip and whoever gets to see you guys, um, those who didn't, 
we'll hear about it, okay. right? <laughs> and honestly, I think the fact that you're spending the time to craft it, workshop it, shows how much you care about the material, and it is your life. And I just cannot wait. And we're just wrapping up. Is there anything you want to say? I have about 30 seconds left. Is there anything you want to say to the audience or the world in general? Either Sanjay, one of you. you have the last line. I'm going to have yes. this last line. Oh, no. <laughs> really the pressure's on. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just really have enjoyed talking with you today. Say something in Japanese to everyone. Ah, so, now, 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 Thank you very much. <laughs> we appreciate you so much, and I'm glad I bought my screen. It just fits, doesn't thank it? Thank you. And thank you for Beautiful. joining us. Um, it's a wonderful time we've had. Thank you for joining us on Meet the Artists. Thank you.